Let's continue building the 2FA logic that we started in the last episode. So basically we need to implement this method on the controller. So let's copy this, go to auth controller, create that controller method. So public function two factor login. We need request and response and this will return response. Now we can validate and get the request data the same way we get it for login and register and other routes. So let's copy this, paste it here. I already created the request validator for this uh, route behind the scenes. So that is called two factor login request validator. If we inspect it, we see that it only has two fields, email and code and both of them are required. And now that we have the request data, we can do pretty much the same thing that we do within the login method in here. So we need to do something like attempt login, but we'll try to attempt login with 2FA. So let's copy this, paste it here, and we'll call this method something like attempt two factor login. Now we can check if this returns a falsy value, then we can maybe trigger some kind of error. For now, we're going to throw validation exception. So we'll do throw new validation exception code equals invalid code. Now let's create this method on the auth class. We're going to add it to the interface first. This is going to return Boolean. Then let's add the same method to the auth class. And let's implement this method. Now remember when we started the login with the 2FA, we put the user ID in the session under the 2FA key. So let's extract that user ID from the session. So we'll do user ID equals this session, get 2FA. And if the user ID is not set in the session, then we'll just return false because that indicates that user should not be authenticated. Then we can get the actual user entity by using the user ID. So we can do user equals this user provider, get by ID and pass the user ID here. Now again, we'll check here if the user isn't found, we'll return false and we'll also check if the user email on this user entity is not the same as the email that is provided in the data, then we'll also return false. So we'll do if not user or the user get email doesn't equal to data email, then also return false. This basically does the simple user verification to ensure that we have the correct user that is trying to log in with the two factor code. Now the actual code verification logic doesn't need to go in this method. We can uh, extract that part within the user login code service class that we created in the last lesson. So we can do something like if this user login code service verify and pass the user entity as well as the code that the user entered. If this returns true or false, then we'll act accordingly. In this case, if the verification fails, we'll return false. Otherwise, we'll log the user in using the login method. So we'll do log in, pass the user entity and return true. Now, the final part that we need to implement is this verify method on the user login code service. So let's add that method here. We have the user entity and the string code. This should return boolean and in here we can basically look up the user login code entity by the user and the given code so we can do something like user login code equals this entity manager service get repository user login code and we'll do find one by and provide the criteria in our case the criteria is user and the code and also is active has to be set to true Let's format the code and let's continue the check here. So if there is no user code found, so if no user login code, then we'll return false. Otherwise, if the user login code is found, then we need to check if it has been expired. So we can do if user login code get expiration less than or equal to new date time, then we'll also return false. Now in this case you could also throw some kind of exception if you wanted to have a special handling for the expiration login code or maybe even return enum instead of the boolean. But in our case we'll just keep it simple and return false. 
and otherwise if everything checks out will return true so basically what we're doing here to go over it one more time is that when the user tries to log in if they have the two-factor authentication feature enabled they will be prompted with a pop-up to enter the 2fa code that is sent to them via email now when they enter that code we need to verify that it's the correct user making that request we do that by storing the user id within the 2fa key in the session and we get that user id here and we verify that it's the right user we also check the email here and then we finally verify the code itself that it belongs to that user we also check to make sure that code hasn't expired and the code is actually active if everything checks out and the user is entering the correct code then we log that user in now before calling the login method we should probably remove the 2fa from the session the login method does regenerate the session but it's still good practice to just remove it since we no longer need it at this point so we'll do this session forget 2fa all right and i think that pretty much wraps it up let's test this out to make sure that it works so we'll go to browser let's try to log in we get the pop-up that means that the email should have went out let's check the email we do have the code so let's copy that go back paste it here and i'm going to enter the wrong code first to test it out so let's click login and sure enough we get the invalid code now let's enter the correct code click login and as you can see we are redirected to the dashboard and the user is logged in now let's test out the expiration part so i'm going to log out let's go back to the code and i'm going to set the expiration instead of 10 minutes to maybe 10 seconds so that way it expires right away let's go back to browser try to log in this sent out an email so i'm going to check the email copy the code go back paste it in here i'm going to wait a few seconds and then click login as you can see even though i've entered the correct code we're getting invalid code that's because the code has expired all right so now that we've tested the both scenarios let's revert this back to 10 minutes and i want to improve this a little bit i want to deactivate all the previous codes whenever a new code is generated because what if a user received two emails with two different codes both of them technically would work but i want to only let user have one active code at a time so what we need to do is that we need to deactivate all existing codes before creating a new code we can do that by creating a new method within the user login code service class so in here we can do something like public function deactivate all active codes we'll pass the user entity as an argument this will return nothing and we can do something like this entity manager get repository user login code we can create the query builder here we'll alias it to c and we'll do update query and we'll set the is active to zero where the c user equals to user and where the is active is equal to one we also need to set the parameter user to the given user then we'll get the query and run execute then we can call this method from within the start login with 2fa method before generating the new code so we go in here and we'll do something like this user login code service deactivate all codes for this user and then generate the new one and send it out let's test this out quick so i'm going to open the database table here and as you can see all the codes are marked as active even though we've used some of them what we should do is that we should also deactivate the codes after using them successfully so within our auth class after this section right here if the verification is successful we can deactivate all the active codes of the user in here as well now technically we only need to deactivate that one specific code but it doesn't hurt to call that method to deactivate any of the remaining active codes for that user since at this point the user has been logged in successfully we can actually do it after the login so we'll do this user login code service deactivate all active codes and pass the user entity now let's go back to this table and let's open the browser to test this out try to log in we get the prompt let's check the table refresh and as you can see all the previous codes have been disabled only the one that was just added is marked as active now let's copy this code go back to the browser and paste it here log in 
that worked let's check the table now refresh and as you can see this code has been deactivated as well all right and i think that's it you can improve this further by implementing a new column on the user entity to control if user should have the 2fa enabled or not and build maybe a basic user profile page that allows the user to update their name and enable or disable the 2fa feature I'm going to leave that for you to do as an exercise, but I'm going to implement it behind the scenes and show it to you in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching, hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Until next time, happy coding.